when it comes to you know going for a role, I know my experience is you know men might have five of the ten traits that attributes they're looking for. A woman might have ten out of ten, but she really wants eleven out of ten before she puts her hand up and says, "Oh, I can do it." And I've I've certainly seen that happen many times. I'm guessing in the recruitment business, you know, what's your experience of when you've, you know, you've, you've rung up women and you've said, you know, there's a role we're looking yep. at you for, what's they been your experience? Absolute, they've always been the hardest ones to headhunt, which is ridiculous. I mean, I, I remember when, when I was in banking, if a headhunter rang me, I was like, oh, <laughs> yes, uh, just a minute, I'll go to the other room. <laughs> and you know, and I'll talk. I had no problem talking, talking to them. But we found, they'll say, We'll contact them and we'll say, this, you know, Judith Beck, financial recruitment group, blah, 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 I have this particular role I want to talk to you about. Oh, thanks for calling. I'm very happy where I'm at. I'm not interested. Right? Totally will close you out. Then, if you call the guy, he'll say exactly the same thing. Thanks for calling. Totally happy. Not interested. But you know what? Wouldn't hurt to have a cup of coffee. And every single person that we talk to when we head out to candidates, are not interested because we're contacting the happy people, the successful people, not the miserable ones. So it's our job then to get them to that coffee yeah. so that we can present an opportunity to them to get them interested. And then when they um, find out about it, it's a journey. And that's how we make placements because someone had that cup of coffee and thought, oh, actually, this is better than what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. So I am interested in having a chat with that organization. Mm -hmm. So the female, the, the she's, they miss out on opportunities. And yeah. I, I have to literally say to them, of course you're happy. You know, that's why I'm calling you. You're successful. You need to have this cup of coffee with me and then you can make that decision. Yeah. And at the very worst case, you've met another person in the industry. But see, I shouldn't have to explain that. Yeah. Yeah. It should just be automatic. Yeah. And so I don't have to explain that to the males. And then, and then she'll go. And then the other thing is, is women are more likely to take a counter offer. So when they go all the way down the track and they, and they have this wonderful opportunity presented to them and they resign and then they go back to their, you know, they, they go back to their boss and resign, they'll be talked out of it. No, we can't lose you. We can't, you know, we've got all these There's plans 20 for you. More and... Sometimes they don't even get an increase. Oh, and they still stay. <laughs> and I'll go, did you even get anything more? <laughs> no, but they've got all these plans for me. Well, why, are, why do you have to threaten to leave? Yeah. To get what you should have gotten. And that comes place. back to a risk aversion. Risk aversion. Better to stick with the known. Yes. Even if I'm not that happy, than to go and try something new because it, it, there's just less uncertainty, it's more familiar, which I think throughout our careers, you know, in order to achieve what we're capable of, we've got to be willing to step into things which involve some uncertainty where we don't know 100% we are going to nail it. And I think that's just that, oh, unless I know I'm going to nail it, yeah. I'm not, I don't know that I want to do it. I don't want to put myself in that position. Yeah. And that's coming back to having that go-to person because when they do get presented with an opportunity, if they don't have someone to go and, and bounce that idea or opportunity off of, then they'll go with the least uh, path of resistance, you know, and go, oh no, better, better the devil I know than make that, yeah. that choice. And when we did the survey last year of 70 of our top senior members with few, and they're all women who are um, executive level, and we asked them, who's your go-to person? Less than 1% had one. Mm -hmm. and, and the ones that, a relevant one, most of the people said, when I have a decision, you know, that's career decision, I, I speak to my partner, or I might get together with a couple friends. Now the reality is, is when you go to your partner, about a career decision, they're going to take the com comfort zone route because they don't want to give you advice <laughs> that's gonna be high risk either. Mm. So they're gonna go, oh, you know, is, do you think it's a really good time to make a move? Or do you think it's really, <laughs> you know, so they're gonna err on the side of caution mm -hmm. often. So you really do need a go-to person who can mm. give you a fresh IV. So you talk a lot about having a go-to person. My friend Joan Amble, who was Executive Vice President of American Express, she once talked about having a board of advisors, a personal board of advisors, which consisted of different people. Some of them might have been in your same industry, some outside your industry, but they're 
people who could give you advice and bring bring value as far yes. as making those decisions and navigating a career path. What if, for those who are listening and going, well, I don't have a go-to person and I, I don't know how to get a go-to person and it's all very well to talk about it, but, you know, how do I find a mentor? Our, our company doesn't have a mentor program. You know, what, what, what advice would you give for getting a go-to or multiple go-to people? For a multiple go-to person. Um, that's a good question. If they're at the early stage of their career and they're just going into the, the workplace, your go-to person um, often can be your boss if you have a good, but when that boss leaves to go to another organization, you shouldn't lose contact yeah. with that person. Keep, those, keep that in contact with that mm -hmm. person. Then you shouldn't be afraid to actually seek a mentor or, or go-to person. And, and that can be done by um, industry networking um, as well, and where, or even asking people. You know, I'm looking for someone. Most of the large organizations in financial services will have some kind of internal mentoring program. Yeah. Um, obviously, FEW is an external advocacy program, but um, if it was me, what would I do? If it was me, I'm just trying to think, what did I do all those years ago? <laughs> I always had really good um, relationships with the, my bosses. And when my bosses left the organizations, I always did keep in contact. But I also know that women are less likely to keep in contact with male bosses because they don't want to be perceived as, oh, that's not appropriate. Right. And because I came from a sales background, when you're in a sales environment, you, that, you don't think about that. You just think, I just keep track of where my bosses go um, because we're more sales orientated. Mm -hmm. and, but a lot of them are. You yeah. know, a lot of people aren't sales orientated. So what what would they do? I think I would I would first go to the HR area of any organization and find out if they have that program because sometimes they may not know yeah. that they have something like that. Then I would look at industry uh, associations that that are that are um, that are with that particular like if they're in manufacturing or if they're in retail or if they're in yeah. they probably all have some kind of an association where they have networking functions mm -hmm. and then I would look to go to those and I'd start introducing and speaking to people and and I would actually approach someone and say look I oh um uh what was it kind of like Becky and you know the the business right. associations yeah. and yeah. things like that I would guess that there would probably be some kind of um, mentoring pro, but even the banks, like I know with um, Commonwealth Bank, they have women in focus, and that is geared toward their their um, banking customers. But through there, they actually have an advocacy program for yeah. women who are starting businesses. Yeah, and a lot of I know American Express, you know, a lot of big yeah. multinationals, you know, certainly do as well. Yeah.